G'day guys, Steve from Darcy here. We're in Victorian high country. Very fortunate and grateful to be able to come along to this high country trip with Four Wheel Drive TV and the crew. It's gonna be a fantastic adventure. Hill climbs, creek crossings and plenty more. Join us for all the action. We'll see you shortly. Yesterday was huge and last night was even bigger. We've had a lot of drama, but we're on the road now. Started off really easy and then that hill climb I was not expecting at the very end. From the bottom looking up it actually didn't look too bad, but after the first and second cars went up and kind of broke the surface a bit, it turned into be a bit of an epic one. So we did have a few tire issues. We had four tyres to repair. Yeah, no, actually, no, six. six. Yeah, that's right, because we had two injured ones and the camera car really needed a new set of tyres. Chris, he rang some contacts, because he's got a few contacts in the tyre industry, being the man he is. We took the opportunity this morning to run into Trelgan and stop in and see Monica and Clint at Trelgan Independent Tyres. We are in there at 9 o'clock in the morning. They had the car up on the hoist. Businesses are fully booked out usually and a couple of phone calls, they made space for us. Fantastic service, thank you so much. It didn't take too long, the camera car had five brand new heavy duty all-terrain tyres on it and a wheel alignment. Thanks so much because that enabled us to move on and get on our way. So after getting the tyres fixed, we're heading back up the bush. Have another day up here in the high country. Well, Greg, yesterday was an absolute cracker. You picked some perfect tracks for us. I know you didn't plan the weather, but it certainly topped it off. What have you got in store for us today? We're going to start in Valhalla, beautiful old town, and then head up a few tracks in the local area behind there. The tracks, which are normally fairly easy, are now going to be a bit more challenging. Driving into Valhalla itself, you've got this bridge that goes over the Thompson River and it is absolutely spectacular. Look down on the railway bridge with the tourist railway that goes through the gully or the valley all the way up to Walhalla. Just absolutely gorgeous, a great tourist attraction for anyone that's into trains. If you go up on a weekend with your family, you can get up on that train and have a nice ride from the St Thompson Bridge all the way into Walhalla. Just a great backdrop for an awesome start to the day. Chris, a little bit of a mission last night. Yeah, coming up that hill climb after Deep Creek, for me, not having the clearance that some of these other vehicles have got, I had to really use the tyres. The tyres I'm on for this trip are the new Mickey Thompson Baja Boss ATs. They're designed for 60% on-road and sand and 40% mud and dirt. So it all came down to tyres, and the tyres certainly were worked really hard. Now, it's not an issue with the tyre, is it? It's just running low pressures and pushing too hard. These are probably the most aggressive all-terrains we've supplied into the market. While the car's fairly standard, those tyres made a real difference. Despite the fact that I popped one off the bead, that shows how hard it was hitting and how hard it was working. To have the traction through those tyres, those tyres are fantastic. Amazing to think that all of this high country area was opened up in the pursuit of gold. Anyone know how much gold was pulled out of this valley? About three billion in today's terms. No wonder people had gold fever, eh? Never been to Walhalla, so can't wait till we turn the corner now. Now what a village. Wow. Just snuck in the middle of the valley here, it's gorgeous. I do love this area. Get into the township itself see Stringer's Creek in full flow, see all the old buildings and the fire station that actually sits over the creek. So this is just hidden away. Hidden little gem. It's a lovely little historical town. It was a gold mining town. 
Well, we live in very comfortable times, but it's awesome that we can come out here, explore, find these things, and then tell our stories. I think they're a bit blown away. Well, Hull is a beautiful old town. It's all been restored back into its original buildings. It's just quaint and beautiful and a beautiful place. Yep. And it's something that I wouldn't expect in the high country. It's just one of those quintessential, cute, old-time towns. It's like a time capsule, really. I'd recommend to anyone, and around the Melbourne area in particular, it's a couple of hours out of Melbourne. And that was it. Wind our way back up into the mountains for a bit of excitement. So we left Walhalla, the road went from gravel to dirt to really slushy dirt, it's been pretty chopped up recently. Wound our way through all the hills, got to the bridge over the Aberfeldy River, that was in full flow. Like there'd been a lot of rain up here and the Aberfeldy River was pumping. Really nice to see that, a couple of people camped down by the side of it, and why wouldn't you, because it's a beautiful little spot. Leaving Lakala, we headed up north on the Aberfeldy Road. A lot of the crew didn't realise it's the same road we used the night before coming out. Now they come out in the dark and couldn't see a lot. Now it's daylight, they could see that this road is running literally along the edge of the cliffs. The views are sensational. You can see the Thompson Dan, you can see the Aberfeldy River. In fact, at one point we actually dropped down and crossed over the Aberfeldy camping ground. There's a nice little bridge there, swimming holes to be seen. And it has a really spectacular drive and a real typical high country road. There's potholes, there's corrugations, it's dirt, but it's high speed, relatively easy, but also at the same time, you gotta have your wits about you tight vans, oncoming vehicles, and as we all discussed, the drop-offs if you didn't see the night before, but now in daylight you realise you do need to take it easy on these roads. If you do get it wrong, well, it's a long way down. To give you guys a bit of a rundown on what I'm running, I've got a ride pro suspension kit. I wanted to achieve a vehicle that had a better stance. In other words, I want to have more clearance, I want a better approach angle. I also wanted to make sure I could carry the weight of the equipment I've got on the car. I put a set of ride pro coils. I got the right ones to suit the weight, to suit the lift, and to suit the handling that I wanted with this vehicle. Matched with, instead of longer travel, Ride Pro shockies. They're valved to suit the springs, they're valved to suit the weight of the vehicles, and the dynamics of the vehicle. So every Ride Pro shock is custom made to suit the vehicle it's being put into. I think it's very important, they're very different to the way Ride Pro look at the way they tackle their suspension, to make sure that the shock absorber works exactly how we expect and what we want. So if you are interested in a suspension like this, the Ride Pro suspension is backed by a three year, 60,000 K warranty. They are low pressure nitro gas shock absorber. They've got triple lip seals and they've got multi-stage valves and they've got all the good stuff we need to make them perform well. If you're not sure what you need, drop in your local distributor, ask for Ride Pro. They will spec up your vehicle. They'll be able to work out a price for you to supply and you can fit it yourself. Or they can even fit it up for you and get it all done. So you literally use a drive-in, drive-out service. Jump on our website, ridepro.com.au, shoot us a message, we'll make sure you get looked after, we'll make sure your car gets set up how you want it. Geez, the clouds are low. We're only just ticked over 600 metres in altitude, we're already in the mist. Chris, we've just crossed over a saddle, a bit of a scenery change, but also just a sudden drop in the temperature. Yeah, spot on. As soon as we drove into that fog, you could feel it and you could see it as well. So visibility's down a little bit in this fog and drizzle too. And how are you going with the changes in temperature? The changes in temperature don't, don't worry me too much. I've come pretty well prepared. I chucked in a couple of heavy jackets and a really light jacket just to keep the rain off. So temperature's okay. Visibility's becoming interesting. And the track is really taking in this moisture, so as it's rained overnight, things have become a little slicker. The water hasn't dissipated as I kind of hoped it would because it has kept drizzling. I think we might be slipping a little bit today at some point. Once we'd left Walhalla and worked our way up into the mountain, we got onto CMF track, which was really narrow, steep drop-offs, beautiful vistas of mountain ranges in the distance. It was just stunning. Every time we had an opportunity to stop, we jumped out, we're taking photos, we're enjoying the scenery starting to encroach on the track a bit. The trees are growing over, so we all got a free cut and polish. We scraped a bit of the dirt off the truck, so we went a bit cleaner. Went along that track, a, a not a difficult track at all, just a nice, easy meander on the track. A couple of years ago, a tragic story happened of a young couple. He's come up here in the patrol by themselves for driving for a day. But unfortunately, they didn't know about the area. This bit. This is actually a closed track at the time. I wasn't here, so I really don't know what happened. But a summary of what I do know, so somehow they ended up sliding off the track and the car went all the way down to the valley. 
It took over a week with a lot of four-wheel drivers, emergency services out looking, trying to find where this car had gone. They found them, they were deceased in the car. As a result, this track's now permanently closed. Just remember, travel in a group for safety. Make sure you've got someone experienced with you or join a club. So when you come out in these places, you've got people to help you. Something goes wrong, you've got immediate help. As I pulled up, I realised things had changed. The track wasn't what I expected. There's a dozer still parked on the track. They just finished grading it. We get up to the top and literally, probably a 90 degree turn, and there's a little mini tractor there and... No, the a bulldozer. Mini tractor. Okay, not a mini tractor, a mini bulldozer. So, at the top of the track... Scan the animals on the We turned the corner and there was a mini dozer at the bottom of the track. I must admit, being car number one, I was a bit apprehensive. Generally speaking, when you've got a freshly graded track and you mix a bit of rain into it, they're pretty slick. I've got to keep the car moving. Ah, and this greasy stuff, don't get me slippery. I need a little bit of momentum on board just to carry me through that greasy bit. So far, it's working on a little bit of spin going on. The mud picking up, it's happening. Look at that, we're done, we're up. We need a little bit of speed for this one. It's not something that Big Eye Becker has a lot of. This track's got some nice rough ledges in it, nothing too hard at the moment. Last little mound up and over now. Woohoo! There's the sky, because this is steep. So it's just a matter of keep the power on so you can get up the hill and follow the road. Just about to go up a significant hill climb. Very, very steep. Big washaways. Pretty daunting. Jeepers, creepers. This is significant. This thing, it looked like this, standing at the bottom of it. It just looked like it went straight up and it, it looked pretty full on. Oh. Actually, she's not too bad, is she? Not too bad. Need some power to get up this hill, don't you? It's going to be sensational up the top here. Wow. And that's an awesome view. When we got up to the top of the track, there was a massive dozer. So there were... Go on. I don't know what you were looking at. There was a big dozer at the top and a little dozer at the bottom. Front end loader. Oh, front end loader, yep. dozer. Look, that's... sorry if I've offended the construction industry. Well, to me, it was a mini dozer a and a big dozer. Track. Got a nice easy descent now down the other side of Trig Track. Little Simpson X does this sort of stuff so easily. Exactly what it was designed for. Alrighty, we've been up Trig Track. We've hit the top, or hopefully it looks like the top. Doesn't look like a lot of uphill ahead of me, so now we're going down the other side. I like that same line because it's fairly loose ground and the vehicles in front of me have compacted it a little bit. Yeah, you're concentrating on driving, so you're missing out on the view, but it's bloody awesome, Dal. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like another climb in front of us. That looks pretty steep. We are going up fairly significantly, so we're just going to do this one at a time. Well, that's so Joel thought, ah, oh, look, this track's done. We're done and dusted. No, well, the dozer that kept going, the hills that were in the past, the easy hills, were actually softer. 
got a bit of rain on it quickly, it would become mud and slippery and holy crap. There might be some winching involved in this. After the first trig track climb, which was really quite long and very steep, it really was great. It plateaued out, out a little bit. We're able to stop there, catch our breath a little bit. Well, that's so I thought, ah, this track's done. We're done and dusted. No, well, the dozer that kept going, the hills that were in the past, the easy hills, were actually a bit softer. We were one of the first people to actually drive it. It was terribly steep, so I'm glad it was dry, because in the wet, that would have been a nightmare. I watched a couple of vehicles go up it just to watch the line and get an idea for what they were doing for pace and speed. I'm taking all the advice from the experts and of course all of my plans and watching other people do it all got thrown out the window when I got behind the wheel. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> Woo! Tell you what, if it had been raining, you wouldn't want to be on this stuff, but that is fantastic. Traction in those Mickey Thompson Baja Boss ATs was fantastic up that trick track. Ah, uh, there got the adrenaline going. Hang on for dear life is basically what he said. Foot down. Yep. It was just an absolute relief to go up that hill. It was really still steep. It was really steep. Oh, and rusty, but... but it had just been freshly graded, so super lucky. <laughs> no problem at all. I think I actually really enjoyed it. It was a bit of fun uh, sliding and mudding up the hill. After that, we went a bit further. We just had the perfect view of the valley because there was valleys on both sides. And that's just what I find so spectacular about this area, is it just never stops. Wow, what a view. You know, the Victorian high country, where else would you want to be? After that, we wound our way down the mountain and then we had a fantastic river crossing. It was really exciting. A river crossing's always cool. But this one was really cool. You dropped down a fairly steep entry into quite a deep part of the river before it sort of shallowed out and we had a nice rocky exit. Well, I was actually quite surprised because I honestly thought the Mickey Thompson car was filling up with water. I haven't crossed a river this deep before driving myself. Going down into that river was quite a steep drop off and again I was worried about scraping the belly of this vehicle. I didn't, the tyres held well, I didn't have any slippage going into the river, but it was steep and it dropped down hard. It was fantastic seeing all the cars going through, generating that bow wave. The river was quite deep. So I'm just a bit worried about how deep this is. You could certainly feel the weight of the water pushing on the vehicle. And then come out the other side, up and over the spur, and dropped here into Merrington's campground. We're going to wind our trip up, have a bit of a power hour and a chat and a catch up. And I want to give a special thanks to all the guys here. Like, at one stage there, uh, at the top of this muddy, greasy hill, as we felt down rain, and the, the Darcy Union came out. We all got to shelter under the cover for a little while. So on this trip, we brought along quite a bit of Darcy gear. We brought the Posi 270 awning. So that's been invaluable in terms of providing shelter from the rain. No need to really provide any shelter from the sun because there hasn't been any this trip. Really quick and easy to set up. Unzip it, a couple of Velcro straps, one tension strap around the side, put out the poles and peg them down, and we're done. So it's quick, it's easy, provides a huge amount of shade and shelter, and we've been using that a lot this trip. We also brought the brand new Eagle chair, and its feature is it's got a zip-up panel in the back. So in summer, you've got a nice mesh back, which allows for cool breeze to blow through your back and keep you cool. During winter, you can zip up that panel, it becomes a solid back chair. The one product that didn't get to use was the Ridgeback Eco Hardshell Rooftop Tent, because obviously we were planning on camping last night, which unfortunately didn't come to pass, but this trip's been invaluable in showing how important a low-profile pack-down height is. So the Ridgeback's only 220 mil from top to bottom. None of the trees have come into contact with it. It was able to glide by all of the obstacles without getting any impact, any damage at all. So that was really cool to see and just reinforces the importance of having a high quality, low profile, hard shell rooftop tent when you're on a trip like this. Sad to see the uh, last couple of days come to an end. It's been a fantastic trip with a great group of people. I'll tell you what, I had a lot of fun bringing people up here. This is an area I love spending a lot of time, and it's nice to share it with people, and especially when you've got a really good crew like we had in this trip. Small for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and how lucky are we here in Victoria? Uh, not only did we get the hot summers and we've got the beaches, but we've also got this high country. It was a great trip. Thanks for Wheel Drive TV. Greg in his patrol from Ride Pro, absolutely awesome, great guide. Took us up some awesome tracks. They bring your kids up here and, and get to know it. it. It's right here in our backyard. It's only a couple of hours out of Melbourne. The Vic High Country, it's huge. There's plenty of room for everybody. Come and have a look. <laughs>